This is an 18 pound prime brisket from Costco. Trimmed off about four pounds of fat. Seasoned it with salt, pepper, and Lowry's. Using some lump charcoal to get my coal bed going. On top of the lump, I put about four or five splits to get a really big coal bed to start the cook. You can see here my dampers closed two thirds. All right, I'm at the three hour mark. I've been running 225 this entire first three hours with that damper closed two thirds. We'll go ahead and take a look at the brisket. You can see it's got a beautiful color. The edges aren't crispy. It's laying extremely flat. Uh, the combination of using that damper and those lower temps will get you this look. All right, so for the next phase of the cook, I'm going to open up the damper. It's going to be closed about one third for the next six to eight hours. Once I feel like I'm close to the end, maybe two to three hours from finishing the brisket, I'm going to go ahead and open that damper wide open. And then for this phase of the cook, my fire size is going to stay the same size, um, but when I open that damper up a little bit, my temperature will bump up to 250, which is when I want. I want to gradually increase the temperature throughout the cook. All right, we're at the eight hour mark. The brisket's definitely in the stall. It's temping in the 160s, I'm dumping off the liquid. You can see I've got some foil protection. That flat started to curl a little bit, and then that point, I just protected it with some foil as well. And now here's the nine hour mark. I went ahead and switched that brisket 180 degrees and pointed the flat towards the fire just to try to encourage even cooking. We're at the 10 hour mark. I'm anticipating this cook's gonna be done in about two to three hours. The brisket's coming out of the stall. So this is a time you wanna cook with high convection and higher heat. So I'm gonna cook at 275 or a little bit higher. And you can see I open my stack wide open to get that extra convection. This is gonna really help to render that fat cap to make it a golden brown. Now this is the part of the cook where you're going to start probing the brisket in various spots throughout the flat. And you got to do this probably every 45 minutes or so. So here's at the 11 hour mark. You can see I'm clearly out of the stall, temping at about 180, low 180s in that cold spot. That the part of the flat that's right under the point right there. That's always going to be the part that finishes last. So I'm going to go ahead and keep checking temps probably every 30 to 45 minutes. So here's at the 12 and a half hour mark. You can see an hour and a half later, I'm already up in the, the low 190. So I'm very close. Now this is the point of the uh, cook where you're going to want to check every 20 minutes because things can change fast. And you can see here's 30 minutes later and it's done. My cold spot is temping at 199. And that cold spot, my target for that cold spot is anywhere between 195 and 199. I never want it to hit 200. Otherwise, you jeopardize overcooking the rest of the brisket. So I'm doing the Goldie's method. So I take the brisket directly off the pit and I set it on a scoop of about a half cup of tallow. I wrap it up immediately really tight. And then I just let it sit on my counter for about an hour until the internal temp was at 160. At that point, I put it into my warmer and it sat overnight for about 10 hours. And here's the final result. You can see the leans cook perfectly. Great pull on it, breaks apart easy. The fat cap is rendered perfectly. Got that gold amber color on that fat cap. The point just oozing with flavor and moisture. That's a really good looking slice right there. And this part underneath the point is really hard to get right. A lot of times you undercook it or you overcook it. And I cook this one perfectly. I hit this brisket with a lot of dirty smoke for those first three hours when I had that damper closed two thirds. And it gave the bark such a phenomenal flavor. Definitely give it a try.